Welcome to our Sunday morning worship service here at Green Valley Evangelical Lutheran Church. I apologize for starting the service a little bit late. One of our members, Miko Copland, uh, fell over on the sidewalk and badly hurt her knee. Uh, so we had to call an ambulance and wait for them. And of course they mistook a church for the apartment complex, so that took another five minutes. So we will be praying uh, for her uh, recovery. The service is printed for you in the worship folder. We will be celebrating the Lord's Supper today, so I hope you remember to take a, a little communion set for yourself. If you haven't, uh, now would be a good time to go and get one or during the opening service, or opening hymn. We open with the song, Father Let Me Dedicate. It's hymn number 75. Him 75. Today we rejoice to worship our triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. God invites us to come into his presence and worship him with humble and penitent hearts. Therefore, let us acknowledge our sinfulness and ask him to forgive us. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. 
but I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. For all that we need in life, and for the wisdom to use all your gifts with gratitude and joy, hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the steadfast assurance that nothing can separate us from your love, and for the courage to stand firm against the assaults of Satan and every evil, hear our prayer, O Christ. Christ, have mercy. For the well-being of your holy church in all the world, and for those who offer here their worship and praise, hear our prayer, O Lord. Lord, have mercy. Merciful God, maker and preserver of life, uphold us by your power and keep us in your tender care. Amen. Father in heaven, at the baptism of Jesus in the river Jordan, you proclaimed him your beloved Son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Keep us who are baptized into Christ faithful in our calling as your children and make us heirs with him of everlasting life. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the scripture readings. The word from God's prophet is recorded in 1 Samuel chapter 16, beginning at verse 1. Samuel anoints David as king. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you mourn for Saul, since I have rejected him as king over Israel? Fill your horn with oil and be on your way. I am sending you to Jesse of Bethlehem. I have chosen one of his sons to be king. But Samuel said, How can I go? Saul will hear about it and kill me. The Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice and I will show you what to do. You are to anoint for me the one I indicate. Samuel did what the Lord said. When he arrived at Bethlehem, the elders of the town trembled when they met him. They asked, Do you come in peace? Samuel replied, Yes, in peace. I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Consecrate yourselves and come to the sacrifice with me. Then he consecrated Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they arrived, Samuel saw Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed stands here before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things man looks at. Man looks at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and had him pass in front of Samuel. But Samuel said, The Lord has not chosen this one either. Jesse then had Shema pass by, but Samuel said, Nor has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse had seven of his sons pass before Samuel, but Samuel said to him, The Lord has not chosen these. So he asked Jesse, Are these all the sons you have? They're still the youngest, Jesse answered, but he's tending the sheep. Samuel said, Send for him. We will not sit down until he arrives. So he sent and had him brought in. He was ruddy with a fine appearance and handsome features. Then the Lord said, Rise and anoint him. He is the one. So Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And from that day on, the Spirit of the Lord came upon David in power. Samuel then went to Rahab. This is the word from God's prophet. The word from God's apostle is recorded in Titus chapter 3, verses 4 through 7. The kindness of God has appeared. It also will serve as our sermon text for today. But when the kindness and love of God our Savior appeared, he saved us, not because of righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit, 
whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ our Savior, so that having been justified by his grace, we might become heirs, having the hope of eternal life. This is the word from God's apostle. Please rise for the reading of the gospel. The word from God's Son, the gospel, is recorded in Luke chapter 3, beginning at verse 15. It's the baptism of Jesus. The people were waiting expectantly and were all wondering in their hearts if John might possibly be the Christ. John answered them all, I baptize you with water, but one more powerful than I will come, the thongs of whose sandals I am not worthy to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor and to gather the wheat into his barn, but he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. When all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. And as he was praying, heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son whom I love. With you I am well pleased. This is the gospel of our Lord. Please be seated. We sing the next hymn, To Jordan's River Came Our Lord. It's hymn number 89. Hymn 89. facing elimination today with the CES, a shadow of what it was before, and layoffs almost certainly coming around the corner? I tell you, January 2022 is almost making me nostalgic for yesteryear. Yet I will say it again, 
What a great start we've got. We started our walk with Jesus through baptism. You can't have a better start than being saved through baptism by the Spirit. Saved through baptism by the Spirit because of His mercy, by the Holy Spirit, to become heirs of eternal life. But when the kindness and love of God our Savior appeared, He saved us not because of righteous things we had done, but because of His mercy. What well, you can see why learned scholars have picked this portion of Scripture for the Sunday we talk about the baptism of Jesus. Out of the blue, Jesus appears on the banks of the Jordan River. Oh yes, His birth his birth had been wonderful. Glory to God in the highest and on earth. Peace, goodwill to men, the angel choirs sang. You and I, we came into the world announced by the baby doctor coming out of labor and delivery. Congratulations, you got a baby boy. you got a baby girl. A wondrous star guided royalty from afar to Bethlehem so that they could worship the baby Jesus and present him princely gifts of gold and frankincense and myrrh. We got a gift, we got a visit from grandma. But after Herod had tried to kill the baby Jesus, Mary and Joseph knew that they were not going to broadcast it, that their son was the son of God, the savior of the world. They kept it under wraps as tightly, as tightly as a guy who wins the Powerball lottery might keep his identity secret so his relatives don't put the bite on him for money. Now the time had come. The Savior appeared on the banks of the Jordan River, heralded by God himself. As Jesus was coming out of those baptismal waters, God the Father proclaimed him as his son. You are my son whom I love. And the Holy Spirit came down and rested upon him. Kindness, Paul says. The Lord didn't come to say, I told you so. He came with patience and humility. He would not bruise guilty egos. He would not snuff out the desperate dreams of repentant sinners. Love, Paul says. God would send his son into a world that did not recognize him. A world that, oh, how did that song that, that Kurt Sedlmeier sang on Christmas Eve, how did that song go? The world treats you mean, O oh Lord. I wouldn't send my children into a situation where they would be treated mean. I certainly wouldn't send them into a situation where they were going to be murdered, but God did. That's love. The love of our God. We are saved through baptism by the Spirit because of His mercy. Paul writes to Titus, He saved us not because of righteous things we had done, but because of His mercy. And how the sinful human nature bristles at this. In its crudest form, the sinful human nature says it does not need saving because it is just fine the way it is. Or if there is something amiss, the sinful human nature can handle it itself. I know, I know. It's hard to see how some can think this way after the two going on three years we've been living through. To misquote President Reagan, people aren't the problem. Or people aren't the solution. People are the problem. But even among Christians, that sinful human nature has found fertile soil to put down roots. Since this sermon is about baptism, I wonder, well, what do other Christians think about baptism. And I, I found this quote. Christians do not get baptized to be saved. 
but because they want to obey God and his word. Really? Well, it would seem wanting to obey God and wanting to follow God's word are righteous things. According to these fine Christian guides, you get baptized because these righteous things are bubbling up inside you. You want to get baptized to give God something, not to receive something from God. And quite explicitly, you don't get baptized to be saved. Yeah, I know. Titus is a small book, barely three chapters. Perhaps it's easy to overlook or forget. After all, Titus wasn't one of the apostles, wasn't even Jewish. He was simply one of the helpers of Paul who was entrusted with the nurture of all the growing Christian congregations on the island of Crete. But Titus didn't write this. The Apostle Paul wrote it by inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And so God is speaking to us through Paul's words. Hey, if we don't think we have to pay attention to the little things, well, it is finished. Repent and believe the good news. Your sins are forgiven. They might escape our notice too. And wives and husbands, you better pad those three little words, I love you, because those three little words might just flow right past them before they even start listening. No, the small books of the Bible are often so special because they put it so simply. It is not because of righteous things we have done that God saved us. God saved us because of his mercy. We Lutherans call that grace, God's undeserved gift of love. God didn't look at us and think we'd pay dividends down the road. God did not wait for us to make the first move, even if the move might be so small as a plea, come into my heart and be my savior. God made the first move. He sent his son into the world. He sent his son on, onto the cross. He sent his Holy Spirit into our world through his word. He sent the Holy Spirit into our hearts to create faith through that same word of God, the gospel of our salvation. If your idea of grace is God making a bad, bad deal with us, accepting our filthy rags of self-righteousness as the entry ticket into heaven, well, what dictionary are you using? We are off to a great start because we are saved through baptism by the Holy Spirit. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit whom he poured out on us generously through Jesus Christ our Savior. Ah, now we can see why we're talking about baptism in this text. I do not know of any other washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit except baptism. The words say as much. Washing, that's a baptism word. You use water to wash. Baptism is a spiritual washing with water. They didn't have dry food in the days of the apostles. And just as water is poured out over the person being baptized, so the Holy Spirit is poured out in that baptismal water in the words of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, which instituted baptism in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Baptism doesn't symbolize God giving his spirit. Baptism is God giving his spirit. He's poured the Holy Spirit out on us generously in baptism. If a person views baptism as merely water, 
And then I guess they're the sort of person who buys a car simply because of the way it looks. Let's get a red car, honey. I like red. But if you're a smart cookie, you look under the hood. You check the reliability of the maker, the manufacturer. You, you, you look at how the car meets your needs. Look under the hood. Lutherans do. God instituted a baptism of water and the words of Jesus, which the Holy Spirit uses to create new birth spiritual life in the hearts of all who are baptized, even the youngest. In baptism, the Holy Spirit creates this new life, the new man, the theologians call it, in the heart of the person being baptized. That new life will never end. That new man, though he tastes the first death, as soul and body are separated here in time, that new man will never taste the second death, hell's eternal separation from God. The Holy Spirit is doing the work in baptism. The Holy Spirit is giving us a great start. We are saved by His work, saved through baptism. Now, I know some people treat the Holy Spirit like He's God light. Looks great, less frightening. But that isn't so. The most frightening moment I had in this town was when I went to the gospel brunch at the Hard Rock one year. A member invited us and he was as much in the dark about it as we were. Um, good gospel music, yeah, okay, southern breakfast food. But when the Rev said, we're going to bring down the Holy Spirit, man, the hair on my neck just stood up and I thought, oh no, you do not want to bring down the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is God. Paul told the Corinthians as much, the Lord is the Spirit. And the Holy Spirit can do anything God can do because the Holy Spirit is God. Job confessed, the Spirit of God made me, the breath of the Almighty gives me life. God saves us, but the Holy Spirit saves us. Paul says as much in this text, and the Holy, because the Holy Spirit is God, and the attributes of God are the attributes of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is everywhere. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there, David sings. The Holy Spirit is everywhere, omnipresent. Well, God is omnipresent. The Holy Spirit is omnipresent because the Holy Spirit is God. And God is eternal, but so is the Holy Spirit. The writer of the Hebrews says Jesus offered himself up through the eternal Spirit. The Spirit is God. And so we're off to a great start precisely because the Almighty God, the Holy Spirit, has saved us through baptism. If you want to belittle the work of the Holy Spirit, well, they're still selling tickets to a long-running brunch and gospel show that might be right up your alley. We are saved through baptism by the Spirit. It shows because we became heirs of eternal life so that having been justified by His grace, we might become heirs having the hope of eternal life. Well, why did the Holy Spirit do all of this in baptism? What was his purpose? Well, I think that's what the words, so that, mean. Like, you know, I hauled out my wallet so that I might pay for three hot dogs and a pack of Tums at the Circle K. I needed some food and I didn't want to get indigestion too bad. That was my purpose. Well, what's the purpose? of the Holy Spirit. The Holy, per Holy Spirit's purpose was that once we were forgiven through baptism, having our sins washed away, being justified, declared not guilty of sin purely because of God's undeserved love for us, we might become heirs of God, heirs of eternal life. 
And at this point, our, our friends in other churches might, might lay the charge against me that I am nitpicky. I am focusing on individual words to prove my point. And I, I, I tell you, I would be laying the same charge as well as claiming denominational divisiveness. Those Lutherans are always looking to start a fight. If the individual words kept proving me wrong, and they do, it's sort of like a person who has been proven wrong replying, well, I didn't like the way you said it. God has a purpose. That purpose is to save us. He carries out that purpose through baptism, through the power of his holy word in and with the waters of baptism. By the working of the almighty spirit, he carries out that purpose. We become heirs. We're due for a big payout, a big inheritance of eternal life. And once again, sorry to kick a dead horse, don't you see how grace is involved here? You can't earn an inheritance. It is given out of the goodwill of the person drawing up the will. But once you are an heir, once that last will and testament has been written and legally received, and once that person, the, the testator, if you want to get all legal on me, has died, nobody can take you out of that will. We are saved through baptism by the Spirit. We are heirs. We have heaven to look forward to. It is just that simple. Saved through baptism by the Spirit. Because of His mercy, by the Spirit, Holy Spirit, to become heirs of eternal life. And no, I'm not an idiot. I know we are up against it. And I know our nation is in a real tight spot on several levels. And I know that nothing but rough road is ahead of some countries in our world. This year may be a year long remembered for its suffering and misery. But what a great start we've got. No matter what this year brings us, we are going to come through. We are going to make it. Our God will bring us through. The faith, hope, and love in our hearts prove it. Our baptismal certificate seconded. And our God's testimony, given to Titus and given to us, seals the deal. Amen. Please rise. The peace of God that passes all understanding will keep your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. Before we confess our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed, we've got a couple of, of prayers. Um, we pray for the 53rd prayer of thanks, the 53rd wedding anniversary of Guy and Shirley Miller. They, they had contact with somebody who turned out to have COVID, so they're laying low for a little while. Uh, we pray for Miko Coplin, who fell before services outside church here. Um, we pray for um, my family. Uh, my dad passed away on uh, Friday. And so comfort for uh, Carrie and Russ, my brother and sister, and, and everybody that Don Pieper Sr. leaves behind. And we pray for my wife, too. Um, uh, she, during vacation down in Tucson, the Thursday before um, New Year's, she, she suffered another seizure, and we're trying to figure out what that's all about, and we'll talk about that after the service. But for now, we pray. Heavenly Father, there are so many crosses that come into people's lives with, with health and, and the loss of a loved one to death. We ask that you be with uh, all those that Don Pieper Sr. has left behind. Uh, comfort them with that hope of eternal life, which you offer to all who follow you. Uh, we ask that you be with my wife um, as uh, we try to find out what, what is wrong with her. Uh, uh, give her uh, a steady pattern of life uh, uh, until we can find out what's going on. We ask that you be with Miko. 
uh, get her timely medical care today. So often if you don't come into the emergency room with a heart attack or an arm hanging off, you are the last one to be taken care of. But uh, please, Lord, make the ER room not real busy today so they can get Miko tended to it and kicked out real quick. And, and we thank you uh, for the 53 years of, of marriage that you've given to Guy and Shirley Miller, and we ask that you give them many more years of happiness lived under your protecting hand of grace. We ask this for your name's sake. Amen. We confess our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. It's printed on page 4 and 5 of the Worship Folder. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke through the prophets. And we believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Praise to God the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In love he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing. Now have come the salvation, the power, and the kingdom of our God, and the authority of his Christ. To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be praised and thanks and honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Please take out your communion set. Do not open it yet. We'll do that uh, in a little bit. But for the words of institution. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it to them, and said, Drink from it, all of you. This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you for the remission of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Amen. We sing the Lamb of God. Lamb of God, you take away.
and peel back that first clear seal to expose the bread. And you can eat that now. Take eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which was given into death for your sins. <clears throat> and then carefully peel back that metallic seal to expose the grape juice, and you can drink that now. Take drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which was shed for you for the remission of sins. May the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Amen. We respond with the liturgical setting, thank the Lord.
thanks for coming today. Um, and as Ricky Ricardo might say to Lucy, you got some splaining to do. Um, we, uh, um, because of my dad's passing, the funeral is going to be on uh, Monday, Martin Luther King Day, the 17th of January. They had, they're, they're literally at his church booked up for funerals until then. Um, in Wisconsin, it's, it's not a good situation. And so Karen and I will be leaving on Saturday. So this week, the schedule will be the same. Okay, and we, we got the Wednesday adult Bible class is starting this week. Uh, it's going to be Zoom because we've got people all, Barb has uh, got COVID, so she's out, her family. We have the close a kindergarten classroom in school. It's, it's uh, it, even though it's more like a cold and a flu, they still want you to stay away from people for five, ten days. And so, um, got to take care, okay? Um, and that also explains the bulletin on like page seven or something. That, that was all me. I, I don't do bulletins real well. Um, but then um, the call process has been affected a little bit, I guess we would say. Um, when Karen had the um, seizure, it was very similar to what she had in the spring of 2019. Had it in April, late July, she got surgery for it. It was just a benign tumor growing, um, but it put pressure on the brain. And um, that was before COVID. You know, April, May, June, July, four months. Now with this, it's taken us until like early February to even get an MRI uh, of what's going on to start the process. And um, if there's one thing I know, uh, it's, uh, it's hard to find a good medical team in this town. And I think we're getting a good medical team. But if I were, if we were going to have the call process and another guy comes in quickly, accepts the call, and then I go into retirement, I'm going to have to go into Medicare, you call it. I do not know what this is. I've never been involved with it. But I'm pretty sure that we would lose some of the doctors. And I don't think changing doctors in midstream is the best thing. So I, I notified the district president. Uh, he was willing to, to slow the process down until we could resolve uh, this thing with Karen. But it's a decision that the congregation needs to make. And I'll be uh, addressing that with the church council on Tuesday, OK? Uh, so, so we'll see, but, but keep her in, in, in your prayers. Um, we will be, ne not this week, but next week, we'll be scrubbing the uh, classes and, uh, that, that I've been teaching. Uh, so we've got one week of Wednesday Bible class, then there will be a pause, then we'll pick it up two weeks later. And catechism will meet this Thursday, but the Saturday and next Thursday class won't. So I know it's, it's kind of a mess, but you know, it's, um, you, you might think, well, nothing is stable. Everything's, everything's in motion. Yeah, but we call that an airplane, and we're real happy with that, and we, we function well with that. And uh, with the Lord's help, we'll get through too. So keep on, keep on chugging. God be with you today until we see each other again.